Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As you're joining us, as there's a rundown going on, uh, welcome to 302 Sports Broadcast at Delaware High School Baseball. Uh, you just saw the end of the bottom of the first inning between a, a really intriguing matchup here. Caravel, the Caravel Buccaneers playing host to the defending champs, St. Mark Spartans. I'm Patrick Ariani. I'm here with my broadcast partner, Jason Winchell. And uh, it's, it's a pretty nice, pretty good matchup here early in the season between these two schools, right, Jason? Yeah, good early season test for both teams. Uh, St. Mark's is coming off their first loss of the season the other night to Apple. Uh, Caravel's on a three-game losing streak, so they both want this one bad. Yeah, uh, St. Mark's was retired one, two, three there in the first. Caravel did have a runner reach, and you just saw the third and final out there. Um, to end a scoreless first inning for, for both teams. On the mound for Caravelle's number six, Joseph Cylon. And for St. Mark's, it's number 20, Chris Ludman. Uh, you know, it slow first inning, but, you know, with these two teams, history-wise, it should be a pretty decent matchup here. Yeah, they're probably going to fill each other out early. I know this uh, from the stats I did. Uh, St. Mark's does not, they're, does not score many runs. But they don't give up many runs. Very pitching and defensive right. oriented team. Game. They play a lot of tight, close games. Um, and Caravelle is a different. Caravelle is an offensive team. They like to score runs. and uh, So it'll be interesting. But they have a tough pitcher in Ludman on the mound. As we're over here in the left field, fancy softball just flew over our heads. Pardon for the uh, pause there. You never know what could happen out here. But we're in between innings here. It looks like Silent is finishing up his warm-up tosses, and we're about to get ready here for the second inning. I believe leading off this inning for St. Mark's. Who is that, Jason? Can you see from here? I think it's number I want to say it's of 10. I think it's Matthew Theodorakis, I think. You're correct. I believe yeah. you're correct. Theodorakis, he's batting. He's the cleanup hitter for the Spartans. We're about ready to get here, get underway here in the second inning. Theodore Rackett's got a little pop, doesn't he, Jason? He's yes, got a little he pop in his bat. Yeah, he had a couple hits the other night and uh, a double against uh, Steckline of Apo, who's one of the best pitchers in the state. So, uh, Silent delivers a first pitch strike, looking like he's pitching directly from the stretch, something that um, you don't normally see from starting pitchers. You're absolutely right. You normally don't see that unless there's a base runner. Oh, one pitch is fouled off by Theodore Rackett. Brings count to 0 and 2. Like Pat said, it's a beautiful night for baseball. It really is. I mean, I'm in the short sleeve shirt. It, this whole week has been beautiful, so it's a great night for baseball. It's it's, it's baseball season officially. Yes. Here's Cylon's 0 2 pitch. Outside corner called third strike. What a great pitch there, dude. Now for the Spartans, it's kind of should tough. Be six. It should be I think you're right, number 19, Matthew Cinco.
The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz & Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Schwartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com.
Mr. Italian began his career in home finance in 2002 as a mortgage consultant. Since 2002, Brian has helped over 1,000 home buyers achieve their dreams of owning a home. Brian's knowledge of current market conditions and his detailed evaluation of buyers' finances ensures that each buyer will receive the best mortgage to fit their needs. Brian is often commended on how efficient and effortless he makes the mortgage process for everyone from first-time home buyers to investors to experienced buyers. For the loan that fits you, contact Brian today. Unique Image opened for business in Wilmington, Delaware in 1979 with one focus, wowing our customers with great products and even greater customer service. 30 years later, we are still doing exactly that. Whether you're looking for marketing tools to promote your business, gifts for your employees or clients, or planning a special event, we're here with the voice of experience to help you every step of the way for your complete satisfaction. Visit our new showroom in the Mill Creek Shopping Center, 4577 Kirkwood Highway. Unique Image, you envision, we create.
Hooters of Newark is located at 136 Astro Shopping Center, Newark, Delaware. Come in day or night to watch your favorite teams and sports on our many TVs. It's a great, fun-filled environment that is kid-friendly. Our craveable food menu has all the appetizers, burgers, salads, tacos, seafood, you name it, as well as our world-famous Hooters Wings, which are the official wings of 302sports.com. Remember, you can always order online to take home our world-famous wings. It's your couch, our wings. Hooters of Newark is located at 136 Astro Shopping Center, Newark, Delaware. Come in day located or Located on Coastal Highway, just north of downtown Bethany Beach, Blue Coast Seafood Grill and Raw Bar is a landmark restaurant overlooking the beautiful salt pond. Some house specialties include fried baby lobster tails, baked oysters, seafood stew, lobster cavatappi, and of course, daily selections of fresh fish and raw oysters. That's Blue Coast Seafood Grill and Raw Bar in Bethany Beach. Come check us out. Second pitch, swing on, swing and miss by Jones. I believe it's 0-2. I think it's 0-2. I couldn't quite see what the umpire called, called on that first, first pitch. pitch. Anyway, here's Ludman's delivery. Ground ball by Jones to the second baseman, Richard Gannett, or Gannett, as he retires Jones there. Two quick Four. outs here in the bottom of the third. Yeah, just, uh, you know, again, Ludman. Finding ways to get early outs. He's not he's not throwing many pitches. No. As Caravelle's uh, next batter will be number 17, Tyler Jewell. And Lubman wastes no time. Delivers the first pitch in there for a strike. Second pitch. Counts even, I believe, at one on one. Uh, you think he called that a ball, Jason? I think you're right. It evens the count at one. Ludman wastes no time, delivers again. Down low for a ball. 2 1 the two count. One. Ludman with the delivery. Off speed pitch in there for a strike. Even to the count at two. Jewel ropes one into the gap between right and center field, and that's going to be easy. Two bases for Jewel. There it is, the first extra base hit of the game, Jason, as Jewel rips a double into the right center gap. Yeah, it went all the way back to the wall, and he was able to motor into second base, and... Uh 
Caravelle has a runner in scoring position here with two outs. It's the first really hard bit of contact against Lubman in this game as Caravelle set up now with a runner in scoring position and two away. The pitcher, Joseph Cylon, steps to the plate against Lubman, going against his mate. That ball goes low. He's trying to help his own calls here with the runner in second base. He can knock him in, give himself a one nothing lead. That'd be nice. Yeah, exactly right. He could do it all tonight, Jason, if he can. Lubman again takes his time walking away from the mound. Steps back on. Jewel leads off a second. Ludman delivers to Cylon in there for a strike. Looked to be an off-speed pitch. Get, catches the inside corner there, Jason. Yeah, good job there by Ludman, even the count. Ludman again looks back. Here comes, he goes and steps off, puts Jewel, forces Jewel to get back to second. Catches some jeers from the Buccaneer bench. Yeah, there was no, he wasn't going to throw it because there wasn't anyone there, but it's a good job keeping the runner from getting a, a big lead. Yeah, he's playing mind games with him. It also makes that batter antsy as Cylon is in the box. Ludman delivers the 1-1. Swing and a foul straight back. As it makes the count now 1-2 and two on Cylon. Yeah, uh, good count here for Ludman. See if he can get out of this uh, jam. Cylon digs in. Ludman gets his gets the sign from the catcher. Here's the delivery swing and a little floater in the right. It's going to fall. And Jewel will round third and score as Caravel opens the scoring in this one. Like you talked about, Cylon helping his own calls with the RBI single in the right field. One nothing Buccaneers. Yeah, that's that's the way to do it. He blooped it in just uh, in front of the fielder there, knocks in the run, gives himself a one nothing lead. Nice little piece of hit, and he, he took the ball where it was pitched, knocked it in the right field, opposite field, and the runner was on the move. Easy run there for Jewel and one nothing Bucks. As Colin Adams steps to the plate for Caravel. First pitch is inside by Ludman. 1 and 0. The count to Adams. That pitch is in there for a strike by Ludman as he evens the count at 1. A good job by Ludman there, evening the count. Battle back here. As Carroll's in the heart of the order. He's starting to work faster as he steps off. Make Silent respect him. And Lumman throws over to first. Silent back in there easily. Lumman, a stretch, and the 1 1. Swing and a miss. Cylon going for second, and he swipes the bag. Cylon figured he wasn't going to throw over there twice in a row and just took off, got a decent jump, and slid in under the tag of Richard Gannett. Yeah, it was a good delay steal there uh, by him, and uh, he was able to get in uh, as the shortstop tried to swag, swipe the tag and try and sell it. So now another runner in scoring position for Caravelle as Adams is in a 1-2 count. Hits it out to right field. Vogel underneath it and puts it away. But Caravelle behind Cylon's RBI single takes the lead here as we finish the third. Your score now Caravelle 1, St. Mark's nothing. And we're going to step away from a word from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Scott Kammer of Soto Concepts. And I'm Jen Myers of Plate Catering. And we'd love to invite you to check us out for your wedding or next event. At Plate Catering, it's our mission to make your dream wedding a reality, expertly taking care of all the food and service details so you don't have to. 
Our professional team will work with you to create a one-of-a-kind event, whether it be on the beach, farm to table, or at your home. Whatever the venue or occasion, Plate Catering is here to help you make it the best it can be. Plate Catering from Soto Concepts, check us out. I'm Scott Cameron of Soto Concepts. We have eight locations, a catering company and a food truck right here on the Culinary Coast in Southern Delaware, and we'd love to see you at one of our locations. Fish on in Lewis in the villages of Five Points. Lupo Italian Kitchen on Rehoboth Avenue in downtown Rehoboth serving homemade pasta. Papa Grande's in downtown Rehoboth. Our treetop deck has the best happy hour around. And Matt's Fish Camp located on Route 1 in North Bethany Beach, your classic seafood shack. At Sodell, we believe in beautiful, simple food and making the world a better place. See you soon. And we're back here. You're once again watching 302 Sports Presentation at Delaware High School Baseball. We head to the fourth. It's now 1-0. Caravel Jason is... Joseph Silent helped himself out there in the bottom of the third. He did it all. He uh, drove in a run, pitched three uh, scoreless innings, uh, hasn't given up a hit yet or a base runner, and he also uh, stole a base there. <laughs> Joseph Silent really doing a great job here through the first three innings as we get ready to start the fourth. As we're – as um, – Dominic Catalano steps to the plate for St. Mark's. Actually, I think that's number two, Austin Colmery. I apologize. That pitch is going to be lifted into right field. Out of play as Aaron Holiday gave chase to it. Holmery's 0 for 1 on the night. He now falls behind Cylon 0 and 1. St. Mark's bench starts to chirp, as they like to say, Jason. Cylon's delivery grounded to third as Tyler Jewell puts aside Colmery for the first out here in the fourth. Yeah, and this is the second time. Uh, through the lineup now, so let's see if the Spartans uh, start adjusting here because uh, it's been all they haven't got a hit or a base runner yet. Stepping up to the plate now for the Spartans, the second baseman, um, number 16, Richard Gannett. He's 0 for 1 as well. Cylon stretches. And the first pitch, grounded again. This one's going right to Cylon. He picks it up, fires the first. One pitch, one out. Two away here and for the again, Spartans. Again, uh, he's not throwing many pitches here in this inning. He's just sipping through. He's efficient. Cylon's been extremely efficient in this game. And once again, he's uh, helping himself out there with the, with the easy ground ball to the pitcher. Now stepping to the plate for St. Mark's is the opposing pitcher for Silent number 20, Chris Ludman. Ludman, the lefty batter. Silent's first pitch, low for a ball. You can see they're kind of playing Ludman to pull in the outfield. Yeah. Seems like the center fielder kind of shifted over, right fielder and the left fielder especially shifted over. Here's the 0 1 fouled straight back. Nice little rip there by Ludman. Yeah, good cut on that one, and he just fouled it off. And I believe it's 0 and 2. 0 and 2 is the count. Cylon looks in for the sign, comes set, and delivers the 0 2 pitch. Swing and a pop-up. It's lined out of play by and he, Ludman. And he went opposite field there. The uh, fielder had to make a long run even though it was foul. A little uh, bit of an inside-out yeah. swing there by Ludman and puts it out of play down the left field line. Yeah, you saw Jones taking off for that one because he's playing a little – he's shading them the opposite way. Still 0-2. Cylon looks in for the sign as Ludman calls timeout. And you can see the uh, Jones shifted over to a little right here after that foul ball this way. Yeah, give him a little respect. You never know. 
Cylon comes set. Once again, the 0-2. Swing and fouled back again. Ludman making contact. He's right on it. Just a matter of putting in fair territory now. Hey, good at bat here by Ludman. Uh, like you said, he's seeing it well and just fouling everything off. Still in that nervous position at 0 2. Yes. Never like that when I played my little league. You never want to be in the <laughs> hole. Cylon's delivery. Swing and again fouled off. That one popped over the third base side. Ludman staying alive here, still 0 2. Two outs here in the fourth inning. Caravel leading one to nothing. I think the best of bats tonight have been by both pitchers. You're not kidding, Jason. They're doing it all. They're standing out in this one for sure. Ludman again calls for time. Wants to be in the rhythm, Jace. Don't want to be standing up there yep. for too long. See, so he steps into the box. Again, silent, taking some time. Gets the sign. Delivers the 0-2. Another foul ball. Left field side. Goes over some of the school buildings. 0-2, they're going to have to get a new ball in there, Jason. They had to look, yeah. the dugout had to get a new ball. He keeps fouling all the ones off. He's all fouling them into the parking lot. And like yeah. you said, that one over the school building. There's a lot of room down here at Caravelle. Silen comes ready. Another 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss in the dirt. Drop third strike. But Ludman will be retired. Put out will be 1-3. to three. And through three and a half, Spartans trailing Caravelle one to nothing. We'll be back after this break. Scott Camera of Sodo Concepts. We have eight locations, a catering company and a food truck right here on the culinary coast in southern Delaware, and we'd love to see you at one of our locations. Fish on in Lewis in the villages of Five Points. Lupo Italian Kitchen on Rehoboth Avenue in downtown Rehoboth serving homemade pasta. Papa Grande's in downtown Rehoboth. Our treetop deck has the best happy hour around. And Matt's Fish Camp, located on Route 1 in North Bethany Beach, your classic seafood chef. At Soda, we believe in beautiful, simple food and making the world a better place. See you soon. Hi, I'm Scott Kammer of Soda. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz & Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Swartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. And we're back. Once again, you're watching 302 Sports Presentation of Delaware High School Baseball. Right now, we're heading to the bottom of the fourth here at Caravelle. The score, Caravelle leading St. Mark's 1-0. And Spartans offense has just not been there tonight, Jason. 12 up and 12 down so far for the Caravel pitcher, uh, Joseph Cylon. Yeah, he, like you said, he's dealing tonight. Uh, actually, both pitchers are dealing really well. This is what he expected, a nice, light, low-scoring game. and uh, That's what we're getting. That's what we're getting here. As Wait. number 15, Colin Adams, or now it's... It's a lefty up. These two up teams met in the state title game last year, won by St. Mark's. I'll have to check to see who's up. Who's up, Nick? I think it's number 34, Alex Barker. So I apologize. Barker is up to lead off the bottom of the fourth. The first pitch is low for a ball by Ludman. Barker reached base on a walk his first time up. Yes, he did. Is that... Goes outside, and now he's ahead in a count once again, Jason, in 2-0 count. Yeah, he's uh, doing a good job of uh, laying off uh, these close pitches that Ludman is throwing. little action here in the Spartan bullpen. Number 13, Jacques Dubeck is warming up. Junior righty as that pitch is fouled off by Barker, bringing the count to 2-1. to one. You talked about the pitch in depth, Jason, and Dubeck is... Up in the pen, might be seeing him sooner rather than later. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, they don't have uh, Billy Sullivan available. He threw a complete game, took a 2-1 loss to Apo the other day, but he threw a, a really good game. 
That was another matchup between two Titans in Delaware. Yeah, one Apo. versus two. Uh, and Apo, the two number two ranked team, came away with the tight two to one win. Here's the two two delivery. Outside ball three as the count goes full on Barker. Yeah, it was a tough loss for the Spartans, but like you said, a 2 1 game that they keep the score low. Here comes the payoff pitch, fouled back by Barker. Goes behind and almost hits the school buses out in the parking lot. Yeah, both teams play a real challenging schedule, so. Mm hmm. Yeah, don't be fooled. Like you said, Caravelle, you said, is 0-3. Don't be fooled by that record. They're 3-3. Three and 3-3, three. They won, uh, their, three and three, they I apologize. won their first three, but uh, lost three straight. Two to out-of-state out teams and one to Slazy Animal. As that is a hit by pitch there, Barker takes one off the ankle, a Ludman breaking ball. Um, so the hit by pitch puts the leadoff runner on for the Buccaneers as they look to get going here. Yeah, and that's uh, so he's He's reached base twice, once with a walk, and the other one hit by pitch. Yeah, he's had a tough one. And I remember the first at bat, he had a couple that were up and in. Yes. And he kind of glared out the Ludman, and that one he wears on the ankle. And I believe they brought in a pinch runner to run for him. And Nicholas Jones is stepping into the plate to bat. I can't quite see who that is running right now. So we apologize to him once we figure that out. We'll let you know. I think it's number 19, Jacob Hoffman, the freshman. Comes in and pinch runs there, Jace. Heck. Good little speed out there on the bases. As it Jones squares around the bunt. You see the third baseman, uh, Lungen, come charging in there. Yeah, he, he's really on top of the plate there. It's Jones. He's in the box. Ludman turns, throws the first again. Nothing going on. You got to think, maybe some of those tosses over to see if he if squares he around. He's squaring the bunt. Mm -hmm. Absolutely correct. They, they'll tend to do that every once in a while. See if the uh, batter shows his hand. He comes ready and kind of quick pitches him there. He was didn't really come set that, that fast and, and threw that in there. And the bunt goes um, behind, fouled off. It's a one to Jones. Yeah, well, it's time is called, first meeting. base coach. Yep. Let's talk things over. Set up a play. 0-1 is the count. No outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Caravelle leading 1-0. Yeah, great game so far here, and we expected that between these two titans of Delaware baseball. Ludman comes set. Jones squares around the bunt. Another toss over to first. Hoffman gets back. That cat and mouse game between pitcher and runner right there. Ludman doesn't want to see a runner get in a scoring position. Jones squares around the bunt again. Ludman delivers. Pulls it back. Swing and a miss. 0-2 now as Ludman really works ahead. Yeah. It was interesting there. Jones saw the third baseman creeping in, decided to take a hack at it. Yeah, like you said, the third base was right on top of him, so he figured it uh, swing and see if he can knock something over him. As Hoffman gets back in the first there on the toss over by Ludman. Be interesting to see if they pull it. I would think they pull the bunt off now with two strikes, Jason. Yeah. I think they'll help be uh, swinging away. Ludman steps off again. No toss over, however. He comes set, peeks in. Here's the 0-2. Down low, nice block. One and two the count. That was a nice block there by um, Cinco. Yeah, great great job by uh, Cinco there. Yeah, and, kept uh, it in front of him and made sure Hoffman didn't uh, escape away to second base. Here's the one-two. Swing and a miss. He got him. Ludman picks up another strikeout as Jones goes down swinging for the first out here in the fourth. Good job there by uh, Ludman. Uh, good job there swinging and missing. First pitch up and outside for the for a ball. Um, 
That was Keister. I apologize. Not my greatest night on the mic. As he gets back, Hoffman gets back easily. 1-0. and Yeah, that last batter was Kevin Keister. I apologize. And now, batting, is number 8, Tyler Croce. It's in there for a strike down at the knees for Ludman. 1-1 one one evens the count. And if I don't know heck, I don't know how I got 11 and 27 confused, Jason. But yeah. you know things happen out here. <laughs> Once again, another toss over from Ludman. Hoffman gets back in easily. Yeah. Good job there, making sure that the uh, runner stays close to the base. Ludman steps off. Really keeping an eye on that runner. Here comes the pitch, and it's fouled back by Croce. Brings the count to one and two. Ludman right back on the mound, not wasting any time. Peeks over to first. Comes home. Outside, ball two. And I believe we... We have, do we have a balk there I've, called I've, there, there it Pat? Is. There and, it uh, is. And the runners award second base. Something you don't normally see in a baseball game is the balk. It happens every now and then, but it's, it's rare you see it. And that allows Hoffman to advance the second base. And now he's in scoring position with less than two outs. Right. That was an important call. As that pitch is in there for a strike. Called third strike as Croce is retired for the second out. Second strike out of the inning for Ludman. And now stepping to the plate for um, Caravelle is number 24, Tyler Longinati. See if he can get uh, As the pickoff attempt was close, but it was dropped by the shortstop, Gallardi. Lefty up to bat. We can't quite get a number on him, so we apologize at home. Here's the pitch. It's popped up. It's kind of a tweener, but it's going to get fouled. It's kind of between the third baseman and left fielder. But you had the third baseman, shortstop, and the uh, right left fielder all converging there, and right. like you said, it dropped foul. Yes, I think, I believe we got number 24, Tyler Longanati up here at the plate. He's batting left-handed. The reason I was questioning that is because in the program he's listed as a right-handed batter. So, again, another another pickoff attempt at second base by Ludman, and Hoffman gets back in there easy. The freshman getting tested out there on the bases. Yeah, he, he gave in the <laughs> pitch run, yeah. and, the, and Ludman's making him earn it. You know? As that pitch gets behind Cinco and advances Hoffman to third. He's really getting his money's worth out there. Yeah, he's getting his workout for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's dirty in the uniform up. He's now on third base with two outs and a 1-1 count. Longanati's got a chance to knock in the second run of the game here. Bun attempt and is missed for the second strike. You rarely see that with two outs. It was kind of, I don't know if it was a suicide or a safety squeeze, but it was a squeeze of some sort and it didn't work out. And as Lubman jumps ahead, one and two. That pitch is outside, evens the count of two. Looked to be some kind of a breaking ball there from Ludman. Hoffman leads off a third. Swing and fouled away. Longanati battling here. Ludman comes set. 2-2 delivery. Swing and a liner into center field. 
It will be caught. Nice play there by Austin Coleman. He really hustled in and yeah, made a shoestring catch. That was a great catch. Save a run there. And as the Spartans get out of the inning, and it's one nothing. Caravel through four. Yeah, so like like Jason said, we're through four now after that nice catch by Colmery. Score still one nothing Caravel, and we'll be back after this break. Mr. Italian began his career in home finance in 2002 as a mortgage consultant. Since 2002, Brian has helped over 1,000 home buyers achieve their dreams of owning a home. Brian's knowledge of current market conditions and his detailed evaluation of buyers' finances ensures that each buyer will receive the best mortgage to fit their needs. Brian is often commended on how efficient and effortless he makes the mortgage process for everyone from first-time home buyers to investors to experienced buyers. For the loan that fits you, contact Brian today. Mr. Italian began his Unique image opened for business in Wilmington, Delaware in 1979 with one focus, wowing our customers with great products and even greater customer service. 30 years later, we are still doing exactly that. Whether you're looking for marketing tools to promote your business, gifts for your employees or clients, or planning a special event, we're here with the voice of experience to help you every step of the way for your complete satisfaction. Visit our new showroom in the Mill Creek Shopping Center, 4577 Kirkwood Highway. Unique image, you envision, we create. We're back here on 302 Sports. We're presenting Delaware High School Baseball, and tonight we got ourselves a good one as we head into the fifth inning. Caravel leading the defending champs, St. Mark's, one to nothing in this one. It's been a pitcher's duel, Jason, and Joseph Cylon takes the mound once again here in the fifth, looking to continue his dominance. Yeah, he's been pitching fast. He hasn't been throwing many pitches in the inning, which is always good uh, when you're a pitcher. And the Spartans are looking to get something going here as Matt Theodorakis will lead off for the Spartans here in the fifth. He's having a, a good year at the plate, Theodorakis, uh, especially uh, extra base hit-wise. He has a lot of doubles this year for the Spartans. Yeah, I can I can remember him from last season. He, he had a little pop in his bat, so that, that does make sense, Jason. Here's the first pitch of the fifth inning. It's in there for a strike from Cylon. Continues right where he left off, firing into the strike zone, pumping that strike zone. Theodorakis waves the bat, gets himself set. Cylon stretches and delivers. Outside, ball one. Once again, beautiful night out here, Jason. It's getting a little, little cool now. There's not much wind. It's a really comfortable evening. Nice yeah. uh, spring evening for baseball. Yeah, it's a beautiful night for baseball here. Cylon delivers a breaking ball in there for a strike and jumps ahead to Theodorakis, one and two. Strike. Cylon comes set. Here's the one, two. Outside for a ball. Another kind of pitch. That was a good pitch. Close yeah. pitch, uh, but it, it was called a ball, and we were counts even here, two and two. He kind of sped up his delivery there, and he comes set, delivers a two-two breaking ball on the outside corner, called third strike, and Theodorakis goes down, making him move for two on the night, and Cylon. Continues to deal with another strikeout. Yeah, he's throwing, <laughs> throwing a lot of strikeouts tonight. <laughs> he's got all his pitches working. Now batting for St. Mark's number 19, Matthew Cinco, the catcher. As he calls for time. Spartans looking to do anything they can to break the rhythm of Joseph Cylon. Even if that means stepping out of the box every now and then. Yeah, trying to... Uh, Mess up his rhythm a little bit because he has. Like we said, both pitchers are, are getting the ball and just firing tonight. They are. As Cinco looked fooled on that one and kind of gave a half hearted swing and broke the plane, as they like to say. And that's a first pitch strike for Cylon as he works ahead yet again. Jumping ahead of hitters, Jason. They say it all the time. It's a big, important thing for pitchers to do if they want to have success. Yep. Silent again, pumps another one in there, swinging a miss for strike two. St. 
Cinco steps in. Down in the hole, 0-2. Cylon comes, stretches, delivers, swing and a miss, another strikeout. Back-to-back -back strikeouts here to start the fifth inning. Um, and he's doing a good job of just mowing them down. He really is. This is an impressive performance. I'm really enjoying watching this right now. Yeah, we're seeing an uh, instant classic here, but both pitchers are throwing the great games. Brian Gallardi steps in to the plate for the Spartans. He's 0 for 1 tonight. Silen delivers low for a ball. Fielders are trying to stretch. They're trying to stay loose. They haven't had much action here tonight. Especially this inning. Ball's high by Cylon, and he falls behind a batter here as Gallardi jumps ahead now. 2-0 and the count. I believe it's only the second time tonight he's been behind 2-0 and to a batter. And the last time he ended up getting a strikeout, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Here's Gallardi down, or up 2-0 in the count. Let's one go by 3-0. and I'm sure, sure he uh, is taking a pitch here, Pat. I, I would think so, too, Jason. I would advise him to. Gallardi's a good, smart baseball player. I'm sure he will as he takes one in there, and it's a strike. It's three, he one, might take though. another one. Who knows? Yeah, you know, they've might. been struggling at the plate tonight. You, you, you never know what could happen here. Here's Silence 3 1 delivery. Ball four. And Gallardi's the first Spartan to reach base tonight. You were right there. He was taken all the way there and uh, gets to go take first base on the walk. Can't be afraid to hit with two strikes, Jason. And Gallardi reaches base. At, well, there goes the, the uh, perfect game. We can now say that. We can at yeah. least say that now. I never want to be the broadcaster jinx. As Shane Lowheed steps into the plate for, steps into the box for the Spartans and pops up a button. It's caught by Cylon. Great catch there by Cylon to help his own calls and get out of the inning. And Very still one nothing Caravel. Lowheed tried to push that down the third baseline, ends up popping it up, and Cylon just fielding his position really well, really having a great game. He's doing it all out here, Jason. And it's going to end this Spartans half of the fifth inning. We're through four and a half, still one nothing Caravel. And we'll be back after this break. Watch your favorite teams and sports on our many TVs. It's a great, fun-filled environment that is kid-friendly. Our craveable food menu has all the appetizers, burgers, salads, tacos, seafood, you name it, as well as our world-famous Hooters Wings, which are the official wings of 302sports.com. Remember, you can always order online to take home our world-famous wings. It's your couch, our wings. Hi, I'm Shannon Colburn, General Manager of Blue Coast Seafood Grill in Bethany Beach. And I'm Douglas Rooley, Vice President and Chef of Soto Concepts. Located on Coastal Highway just north of downtown Bethany Beach, Blue Coast Seafood Grill and Raw Bar is a landmark restaurant overlooking the beautiful salt pond. Some house specialties include fried baby lobster tails, baked oysters, seafood stew, lobster cavatappi, and of course, daily selections of fresh fish and raw oysters. That's Blue Coast Seafood Grill and Raw Bar in Bethany Beach. Come check us out. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching 302 Sports presentation of Delaware High School Baseball. And what can we say about this when it's been an impressive pitching performance? We keep saying it all night between both pitchers, Joseph Cylon and Chris Lubman. It's one nothing as we enter the bottom of the fifth inning. And, Jason, it's just, I mean, what you can't ask for anything more than this. Two powerhouses going at each other and playing a really right. clean baseball game. Right. Clean baseball game, uh, good fielding by both teams, good pitching by both teams, and, uh, a timely hit there for Caravel, and mm -hmm. we're in. A, like we said, it was going to be a pitcher's duel, and it, it has a disappoint. One nothing. Cylon, he's, he's the one that picked up the uh, the RBI single. As for Caravel, I believe this is a new batter for Caravel, number nine, Ethan De Regis, tenth grader, steps into the plate with the high socks, and I think he took a strike there. He did. He took a first pitch strike by Ludman. Ludman does not waste any time. Misses low there to even the count at one. Once again, the Spartans have action in the bullpen. Jacques Dubeck once again up in there. Number 13 for the Spartans. As that ball's low by Ludman, it's two to two and one. Ludman 
Ludman delivers in there for a strike, evens the count. Two and two, I believe, right? On DeRegis, yes, two and two. DeRegis, a sophomore. Ludman misses outside, make the count full. Full count. Zero outs here in the top of the bottom of the fifth inning. And I'm sure DeRegis and Caravo would be happy with the leadoff walk. Here's the payoff pitch, swing and fouled away as DeRegis stays alive. Heading towards the St. Mark's dugout there. Ludman sets, here's the 3-2. Up high, ball four, and to reach his, reach his base to lead the fifth inning off for Caravelle, a leadoff walk. There you said, you said they were looking for the leadoff walk. And and now we're back to the top of the lineup. And this is number uh, 11, Nicholas Jones, as there's a meeting at the mound here for the Spartans. Coach wants to speak things over with Chris Ludman. But, you know, you know, we, we keep saying it, Jason, it's, it's been a really clean baseball game. That's one of the only mistakes you've seen Ludman make as far as starting an inning off with a walk. You haven't seen many, you know, no. leadoff batters get right. on in this game. It's been uh, with one or two outs that we've seen mm -hmm. base runners and Caravelle coming back to the top of the lineup here. Uh, you really want to get that nine-hole hitter uh, out. Right, right. And it'll be interesting. You've seen all night with this one, Ludman really paying attention to runners while they're on base. Um, you know, you expect, I guess, a couple throwovers. And um, wouldn't put it past the Buccaneers to really get the runner in motion here. You've seen them steal a couple bases so far in this one. Yeah, we even saw a delay steal in the one right, inning. Right, right. And that's not a bad way to go either. Anyway, Jones steps in, runner on first, nobody out here in the fifth inning. Ludman, there it is, throws over to first. I think the, uh, I was looking at the batter, I think he did show bunt there. There it is, he shows bunt again, pulls it back, pitches high. 1-0 the count. Small ball, Jason. You know, you, you love to see it no matter. I've always been a big fan of small ball. So, bunt, bunting to get the runner over in a close game is um, a nice strategy. Is that, is that bunt is either fouled away or deflects off of the arm. I think that was fouled away because if he was hit by that pitch, he would have he would have been shown a little more uh, yeah, reaction than that. I so it, was a foul. He might, it might have hit him. It might have hit him, actually. It's tough to see out here in, in left field, but either way, it, it evens the count at one. Now we were talking, Pat, in a close game like this, one nothing pitcher's duel, it's nice to move that, if you can, get that runner over and, and, and inch out another run. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right, Jason, because all it takes is a couple of swings to get one run. Two, it takes a little bit of work. So I, I think that Caraville feels if they can get a 2 nothing lead, they're, they're going to be feeling pretty Pretty confident, especially with the way Cylon's been dealing. Right. As that ball was bunted, a, a bunted foul behind the catcher and brings the count to one and two. We might see the bunt off here. Yeah, it'll be strikes. interesting to see with two strikes on Jones, yeah. Ludman comes set. Steps off. It's been something you've seen a lot from the Spartan pitcher tonight, really keeping an eye on the base runners. Yeah, he's not taking any chances of them getting the good that lead. That ball's ripped and caught by the third baseman. There's one. Will not get two. Nice play there by Joseph Lungen as yeah. he flips the second base to get the lead runner. Spartans were unable to turn two. But yeah, it was a good play. Oh, and it, I almost did turn that double play. Great job there by the Spartans. And uh, they got the lead runner, which is always mm -hmm. important. So one away now for Caravelle. Still runner on first. For number 17, Tyler Jewell. He was the one who hit the double into the gap last time up and scored on the silent hit as he right. takes one in there for a strike. Yeah, Jason, he was about, uh, that was a two hopper off the fence in that right center gap. So um, Ludman should be very careful with Jewell here. 
Sets, throws over to first. Lundman knows with, you know, Jules' gap power, at least, that he's shown in the previous at bat. He wants to keep that runner out of scoring position. Is that swung and hit a mile in the air? Gallardi over from short, catches the ball right behind the third baseman for the second out of the inning. Good job by uh, Gallardi to get out there because they <laughs> – Left fielder had a mile to run there to try and get to it. Yeah, I don't know if Catalano would have got to that one. Dominic Catalano, the left fielder, he uh, he was going to have to run a country mile to get to that one. So smart heads-up play there by Gillardy to get over there and um, retire Jewel for the second out. And now the pitcher, Joseph Cylon, steps to the plate for Caravelle. He's, got the lo he's knocked in the lone run in this one. And there goes the steal. And he's out. Delayed steal once again tried by Caravel. And Nicholas Jones is caught stealing at second base. Nice play by the Spartans. Great throw there by Senko to get him. And like you said, they it tried to delay steal again, and this time it did not work. Senko, great job throwing out the runner, and that's going to end it for the fifth. We're going to head to the sixth inning. Still one nothing Caravel, and we'll be back after this break. That was a gun. <laughs> Hi, I'm Scott Kammerer of Sodell Concepts. And I'm Jen Myers of Plate Catering. And we'd love to invite you to check us out for your wedding or next event. At Plate Catering, it's our mission to make your dream wedding a reality, expertly taking care of all the food and service details so you don't have to. Our professional team will work with you to create a one-of-a-kind event, whether it be on the beach, farm to table, or at your home. Whatever the venue or occasion, Plate Catering is here to help you make it the best it can be. Plate Catering from Soto Concepts, check us out. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron. We have eight locations, a catering company and a food truck, right here on the Culinary Coast in Southern Delaware, and we'd love to see you at one of our locations. Fish On in Lewis in the villages of Five Points. Lupo Italian Kitchen on Rehoboth Avenue in downtown Rehoboth, serving homemade pasta. Papa Grande's in downtown Rehoboth. Our treetop deck has the best happy hour around. And Matt's Fish Camp, located on Route 1 in North Bethany Beach, your classic seafood chef. At Sodell, we believe in beautiful, simple food and making the world a better place. See you soon. I am. And we're back. You're watching 302 Sports presentation of Delaware High School Baseball. We're here at Caravelle Academy, and it's been it's been a good one, folks. As we head to the sixth inning, it's one to nothing. Caravelle on top. Pitcher's duel. Joseph Cylon. Goes out for his sixth inning of work. He's allowed one base runner so far, and that was a walk to Brian Gallardi. And he sets in here to the, in the sixth inning. First batter will be number four, Jeremy Vogel, as the pitch is up and in, 1-0. and oh. But, you know, Jason, like we keep saying it over and over again. It's a one-run game. Mm -hmm. it's, it's exactly right. Even though Cylon has been dealing, all it takes is a couple base runners to put a little pressure on, and the Spartans could get back in this one. Here's the 1 0 delivery, swing and a miss. Spartans got bullpen activity again. I think it's Dubeck once again in the Spartan bullpen. He might be he might be going out there to start the sixth as Vogel grounds it to third. Nice, nice scoop there. It was a, a low throw by Tyler Jewell. But the first baseman there, uh, I think that was Croce. I have to say, I think, yeah, Tyler Croce with a nice scoop to retire Vogel. No, oh, it is Barker at first. I, I'm, I'm off my game tonight, Jason. Yeah, that's a tough uh, to see from here, but a great scoop by Barker there. I think that when he got pitch run earlier in the game, you probably thought he came out. Yeah, I don't know. I just saw a lefty and I started looking down the list. Rookie mistake. Anyway, Dominic Catalano steps into the batter's box. He swings and laces one down the third baseline, but foul. Seems like the Spartans are getting some solid uh, contact this time around. And they they're, they're need to straighten them out a little bit, but they're at least fouling some off this, this time around. There's, there is some more contact being being made right here. And, and now the sixth inning, second time through the lineup. Cylon's delivery, check swing, foul down the first baseline. And Cylon works ahead now, 0-2. 
He's been uh, pitching ahead of most all night except yeah. for that one walk. Yeah. He's been uh, it's always 0-1, 0-2, 1-2. As they're waiting to get the ball out of the field to play, I think. What's going on here? Catalano steps in. And Cylon looks in for the signal. Comes set and delivers. Up high for a ball, one and two. Again, it looked like Cylon tried to speed up his delivery there and delivered one a little high on Catalano. Here comes set. Here comes the 1-2 to Catalano. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Good pitch there by him and they get uh, second out here in the sixth inning. Cylon continuing to deal. I, I don't have a, a total on the strikeouts, but he's got to be approaching 10. Yeah, he's got to be close <laughs> to double digits. Uh, it should be top of the order. Yeah, Austin. top of the order. Austin Colmery steps in for the Spartans 0 for 2 tonight. Takes a strike from Cylon. Cylon definitely on top of his game. And even here in the sixth inning as he steps off. Third baseman playing back on the cutoff here. It's pretty far back. Yeah, he's playing. Palmer got a little bit of speed too. He's playing a deep third base. Cylon delivers that one. Outside for a ball. One and one. One ball and one strike here. It's Colmery back in the box. Silent. Kicks and delivers. Outside ball two. It's uh, two one here. Silent. Delivers, swing and a miss. Foul tip. Two and two now to count with two outs here in the sixth inning. One nothing game still here in the bottom of the si top of the sixth inning. Colmery sets in. Cylon has his sign. He kicks and delivers. Swing and a miss. He struck out the side here in the Str sixth inning. Another strikeout by Joseph Cylon. Dominant through six innings. We're going to head to the bottom of the six. Nothing doing here for the Spartans. It's one nothing, and we're going to be back after these short messages. Got camera of Solo Concepts. We have eight locations, a catering company and a food truck right here on the culinary coast in southern Delaware, and we'd love to see you at one of our locations. Fish on in Lewis in the villages of Five Points. Lupo Italian Kitchen on Rehoboth Avenue in downtown Rehoboth serving homemade pasta. Papa Grande's in downtown Rehoboth. Our treetop deck has the best happy hour around. And Matt's Fish Camp located on Route 1 in North Bethany Beach, your classic seafood shack. At Sodow, we believe in beautiful, simple food and making the world a better place. See you soon. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz & Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Schwartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. And we're back. You're watching 302 Sports Presentation. Delaware High School Baseball. We're here in the bottom of the sixth inning here at Caravel Academy. And the home team, the Buccaneers, leading the Spartans of St. Mark's 1 to nothing. And it looks like um, number 13 for St. Mark's, Jacques Dubeck, is finally going to get into the game after warming up the past three innings. He and threw it, a lot of warm up pitches. So he, he should be ready. He really did. He's been warming up, ladies and gentlemen, since about the third inning. And that means it's going to close the line on Chris Lubbin, who really had 
a really quality start. Only one run through five innings. I think he only gave up three or four hits. But, unfortunately, he's going up against Joseph Cylon, who's just been a little bit better tonight. Yeah, a little bit better. And, uh, like you said, he leaves uh, only giving up one run through five innings and uh, three hits. So, good job by him. Yeah, great, great outing by Chris Lubman. And we'll see what happens here as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Lubman's going to actually go to third base as they bring in uh, Dubeck to pitch. And Lubman goes over to third. If you if you're the Buccaneers here, maybe you want to think about adding the run this inning. We might see if they get a leadoff hitter on, maybe some more small ball here. Yeah, I'm sure that the Buccaneers are going to try to, you know, pad that lead a little bit. Every little bit, you know, helps, especially against the Spartans, who, you know, they're one of the they're one of the best teams in the state for a reason. They they can find ways to squeeze a run out and extend this game. I think leading this inning off is Cylon, who gets a whole new count after the runner was thrown out and takes first pitch from Dubeck for a strike. Dubeck comes set, delivers, swing and a miss by Cylon. 0-2, pumped it right on by him. Yeah, good job there, and uh, new pitcher, uh, so he hasn't seen him yet before, and uh, so far, advantage pitcher. Dubeck, swing and a miss, Cylon chased the high cheese for the first out here in the sixth. Three pitches, three strikes, and one down here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Coming up to the plate for Caravelle number 15, Colin Adams. The Buccaneers catcher gets his first look at Dubeck as that first pitch is low for a ball. First pitch breaking ball there from Dubeck. Hey, okay, changed it up. He went with the first pitch breaking ball after throwing three fastballs last batter. Dubeck comes set. The 1-0 is high for a ball. As Adams works ahead of Dubeck here, 2-0. Dubeck steps off. Pretty much everybody's straight up in the field here for the Spartans, both infield and outfield. Dubeck with the the uh, knee bender there. Uncle Charlie, as they like to say, right? Yeah, that is correct, the Uncle Charlie. 2-0 curveball for a strike. As Dubeck looks in, time is called by Adams. 2-0 curveball, that takes some some guts. Yes, it does. <laughs> Dubeck comes set. He delivers 2 1. Another breaking ball in there for a strike. Evens the count at 2 and 2. He's throwing a lot of breaking balls here to Adams. Must be something uh, scouting report. It's, it must be. There's another one as Adams pops it up towards the first base dugout and out of play. Got him out in front of that one. That was the. the um, third consecutive breaking ball you saw there, and Adams made contact, but it was it was weak contact. Yeah, he stayed alive. Here comes Dubeck, lines and delivers, popped him up. It's going to go out of play behind home plate. Yeah, Adams fighting fighting here, trying to time him up. Comes Dubeck. He winds, delivers. Line drive, base hit past Ludman at third base. And it looks like it's going to be a single there for yeah. Colin Adams as he rounded first hard there. I didn't know if he was going to try for yeah, two. Took, but took a big turn there and yeah. thought better of it. Catalano got to that ball pretty fast and holds Adams to a single, and there will be a pinch runner Believe for him. The it would be a courtesy runner, right, because he's catching tonight. There it is. That's it, Jason. In high school sports, you're allowed a courtesy runner for the catcher. Barker. This is number 34, Alex Barker, steps in for Caravelle. He 
walked his first time up and was hit by a pitch his second time up, so he's reached base both times in tonight's game. Dubeck looks in, throws over to first. That's been a little bit of a trend you've seen from the Spartan pitchers. Every time there's been a runner on that first pitch, they throw over to first base. Yeah, and like you said, it's always uh, first pitch. Dubeck comes set, delivers to Barker, in there for a strike. Can't quite see who that is on first base. I wonder if it is Jacob Hoffman, who pinch ran earlier in the game. He can't pinch run again. There you go. That, Pat, learn the rules, will you? That throw over from Dubeck is high. I think it's yeah, I think it's 16, Tommy Tracy, who is a sophomore. Sophomore outfielder. Pinch run in here. Dubeck delivers. Runner goes. And he's out. It's the second time Cinco's thrown out a runner tonight. Cinco to throw is a little bit off, but Gallardi was able to catch it and somehow get the runner. That's how that's how um, fast the throw got there. He was able to kind of adjust and tag the runner out for the second out here in the inning. And now Alex Barker's in a hole 0-2. And Dubeck now has two outs. Dubeck. Wines delivers, and there it is, strike three. And Cinco tags him to end the inning. So we're through six. The Spartans coming up, last three outs of the game. It's one to nothing, Caravel heading to the seventh, and we'll be back after these messages. Unique Image opened for business in Wilmington, Delaware in 1979 with one focus, wowing our customers with great products and even greater customer service. 30 years later, we are still doing exactly that. Whether you're looking for marketing tools to promote your business, gifts for your employees or clients, or planning a special event, we're here with the voice of experience to help you every step of the way for your complete satisfaction. Visit our new showroom in the Milk Group Shopping Center, 3577 Kirkwood Highway. Unique Image, you envision, we create. Hooters of Newark is located at 136 Astro Shopping Center, Newark, Delaware. Come in day or night to watch your favorite teams and sports on our many TVs. It's a great, fun-filled environment that is kid-friendly. Our craveable food menu has all the appetizers, burgers, salads, tacos, seafood, you name it, as well as our world-famous Hooters wings, which are the official wings of 302sports.com. Remember, you can always order online to take home our world-famous wings. It's your couch, our wings. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching 302 Sports presentation of Delaware High School Baseball. And this is a good one. We got here at Caravel Academy. It's one to nothing. Caravel leads over St. Mark's as we head into the seventh. And number six, Joseph Cylon on the mound for Caravel has only allowed one base runner in this game. And it was a walk to Brian Gallardi. So you could kind of read between the lines there if you want at home. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to be the one that jinxes it. But there could be something special going on here in the top of the seventh of a one nothing game. Cylon's first pitch driven foul as number 16, uh, Richard Gannett, comes to the plate. And the St. Mark's crowds are making a lot of noise here as they're trying to urge their team on here in the top of the seventh inning. You're exactly right, Jason. The Spartans down to their final three outs here, looking for anything that they can get going on Cylon as that one bounces up there to even the count at one and one. Good thing is they have their two, three, four hitters up this inning, uh, which is always a good... The heart of the lineup, as right. they like to say, for the Spartans coming up here. Gannett gets set. Cylon delivers the one, one. Little high, ball two. Just under the letters there. Two and one, the count to Gannett. He's, he, he'll take a walk. He'll do whatever he can do to get on base right now. Yeah, you need base runners. Cylon comes set, delivers. In there, strike two at the knees. Counts even two and two here to Garnett.
tension. Tension starting to mount here in the top of the seventh. Gannett up to the bat. Here comes the pitch from Sideline. Fouled away. Didn't look too comfortable in that swing there, Jason. No, he didn't. Uh, but he was able to stay alive, and that's always and that's a good it. thing. Live to fight another pitch. Here comes Cylon. He's set. Here's the delivery. Swing and another foul ball. This one down the third baseline. Just barely making contact on these little squib shots. Yeah, he's fighting them off, which mm -hmm. is, like we said, it's a good thing. Like you said, live to see another day. Gannett steps in. Counts two and two. Here's the pitch from Cylon. Swing and a foul ball over to first base over Caravelle's dugout. A lot of souvenirs tonight. A lot of souvenirs. And Gannett with a good fight here. One of the better at bats the Spartans have had tonight against Cylon. Gannett waves the bat around. Cylon comes set. Kicks and delivers. Down low, ball three. Gannett, good job. Good plate discipline there not to chase that breaking ball in the dirt. Yeah, a really great at bat. He's fouled off pitches mm -hmm. and, like you said, great eye there laying off that pitch. Cylon set. Here's the payoff pitch. Swing and a drive into right field. That ball is put away. I believe that is number nine, Ethan DeRegis, I believe. I remember the high socks. Puts away for the first out of the seventh inning as Jeanette, really good at bat, but all for nothing as he flies out. That'll bring up Matthew Theodorakis. Yeah, Theodorakis step he's, into the plate. Like we said earlier, he's 0 for 2. He, he's 0 for 2 in this one. One out here in the seventh. Here's the wind in the pitch. Strike one as Cylon works ahead of yet another batter here. Yeah, good job by him getting ahead of the. Spartans still searching for their first hit here with one out in the seventh. Cylon kicks and delivers outside ball one. Duracus is going to be patient here in the in the seventh inning. As are all the Spartans hitters. They're going to try and work anything they can to get a base runner. Cylon delivers in there for a strike. That's one and I think, two. I think Thea Duracus thought that was a little high or a little outside, but the umpire thought otherwise. It's now one and two. <laughs> State Marks crowd. All oh, over. All, all over, over that. <laughs> Theodorakis steps in. Cylon delivers. Check swing down low. No swing, says the home plate umpire. And we're at two and two now. Evens the count up. Now we're seeing uh, some better bats here in this inning as far as uh, fouling pitches off and long counts. I think the Spartans, they, they realize what's happening right now, and they know that they need just one base runner to get things going. And Cylon, of course, you know, He's been dominant all game, but it's that last inning. Those three outs are usually the hardest ones to get, so yeah, you're they, starting to see him like kind said, of miss a little bit. That's why you uh, see closers in baseball, because they like to get those yeah. last three outs. But like you said, the toughest. Cylon comes set, kicks. Here's the 2-2. Swing and a line drive down the left field line, and it's going to go foul. Sliced foul, and we're still at 2-2. Two Pretty solid contact made there by Thea Duracus. It sounded good off the bat, and it was a pretty solid line drive, just hooked foul. Yeah, good swing there, and uh, like you mm -hmm. said, he just fouled it off. Good battles here by first two batters of the inning for the Spartans. And here we go, Cylon comes set. Here's the 2-2. Outside, ball three, count goes full. Yeah, close pitch, uh, good eye. And like you said, another full count to start mm -hmm. this inning. And these are the at-bats that the Spartans are going to want to wish they had the whole game and not just in the last inning. 
Kick, 3-2 from Cylon, driven into shortstop. Fielded the throw. Safe infield single, single by Theodorakis. Breaks up the no-hitter here in the seventh inning. Yeah, great hustle to get down the line, and he beats the throw. Keister was playing deep. He had to go more towards third base. He was playing more up the middle, and I think that was all the difference in the, the safe and out right there. Yeah, it was a close play. Still, it was a nice job getting to it and throwing all in one delivery, but Theodorakis hustling down the line, breaks up the no-no, and we got, this is interesting now, Jason. Yeah. Runner on first now. One out, Chris Lubman at the plate. It was Theodorakis, I think. Gosh darn it, I'm wrong again. That was Chris Ludman who got the infield single. Look at this, Pat. You're just not you're not getting the job done tonight. There's nothing more than that to say. You know what I mean, Jason? Yeah, I I, I went I, I said the name too a couple times. Yeah. Uh, I think this is Theodorakis at yes. the plate now. He lines one towards the St. Mark's dugout. And it was great hustle by Ludman getting down the line for the it end was. single. Holy smokes. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> Your name will go in the paper as the guy who broke up the no no. Yeah. Not Theodorakis. Either way, maybe that takes a little pressure off a of Cylon here as he jumps ahead of another hitter, 0 2. Now knowing that the no hitter is not, in, and he just strikes another batter out. <laughs> he so, came back firing. Yeah. All that, all that tension of the no hitter goes good away. Morning, and he comes good morning, good afternoon, good night on that batter. Yeah. I think this is Cinco, number 19. Matthew Cinco, he's the last hope here for the Spartans. Two outs, runner on first. Swing and a miss, strike one. Now that the perfect game and no hitter are out of line. Joseph Cylon now just trying to go for the complete game shutout. Yeah, which still impressive in his own right. Still impressive to shut out the number one team. Cylon delivers in the dirt. Nice block there by Adams. We've seen that both catchers play mm -hmm. outstanding tonight. Blocking uh, pitches in the dirt tonight. Helping their pitchers out. Yeah, Adams, great job there. Holding, you know, keeping that ball in front of him. Not allowing Lubman to get into scoring position. Silent comes set, delivers, check swing. And he said he went around. That's yeah. going to be strike two. It looked like he went around from here. Mm -hmm. uh, good pitch, and the Spartans are down through the last strike here. This is it. Cinco down to his last strike, like Jason said. One and two. Cylon comes set, kicks, delivers. Low ball two. Another nice at bat by a Spartan batter. Yeah, it's like you said, it's a shame that it mm -hmm. took this long, but they've had some great at bats this inning. Cylon set swing and a miss. And there Struck it is. Struck him out. The complete game shutout. Complete game one hitter. And I believe for he had Joseph Cylon. Strikeouts too tonight. Yeah, at least at, at least, least 10, ten, potentially eleven, according to our count. Uh, impressive performance there. By Joseph Cylon, who completes the game with a one-hit shutout. Heck of a game there, Jason. Yeah, great job by him, and he kept the Spartans off balance all night. He really did. So that that's going to do it here. I, like we, we said, um, Cylon, not only he's got to be our player of the game. Yeah. The complete game, one-hit shutout with 10, and 11 strikeouts. And he knocked in the only run of the game. And he knocked in the only run of the and game. And he had a stolen base. And he stole a base. I mean... Is there anything else that this guy can do, man? That's that's what it came down to. Of course, he singled into right field and scored um, Tyler Jewell after Jewell had hit a double into the gap. Right. He turns. He actually tried to steal third base on that. It was kind of like a hit and run. And um, Cylon puts it in play in the right field and ends up scoring the only run of this ball game. As our final here is Caravel 1 as they move to – Four and three on the season, and St. Mark's. Mark's drops to five and two. Yep, and uh, like we said, the final score one nothing. Caravel wins. Um, do we know who they play next? Uh, 
I believe uh, St. Mark's uh, next game is Sally's at Frawley Stadium next next uh, Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. And we will live stream that game. And Caravelle's at Hudson on Friday at 1 o'clock. We right. might be live streaming that game also. We're trying to get that locked down. All right, so 302 Sports is going to be your... I believe we're doing the... Tower Hill Caravel soccer game at Tower Hill tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. So there you also. have it. Really good matchups here in all sports along the spring docket here on 302 Sports. Make sure you tune in to you know any of the games that you can catch uh, for more great Delaware high school sports. Um, once again, the final score here tonight, Caravel Buccaneers 1, the St. Mark Spartans 0, um, for Jason Winchell, I've been Patrick Gary Annies. Uh, any final words, Jason? No, we just saw a great game tonight uh, between two top ten teams, and it was a great game to be at. It really was. So once again, for Jason Winchell, I'm Patrick Gary Annies, and all of us at 302 Sports, we thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.